Hello, and welcome to the EDTA monthly town hall webinar series. I'm Julie Theobald, Executive Director of EDTA, and I'm excited to be here today because this topic is one of the most enjoyable parts of my job, which is recognizing our members and supporting them and giving them money. Uh, so I'm excited to share our um, special guests who are here with us today. I'd like to introduce, first of all, Jeff Hall, um, who is a longtime member, and let him say hello and tell you about himself. Hi there. Hey, thanks for having me here today. Um, as Julie said, I'm Jeff Hall. I'm the troop director of Thespian Troop 5575 at Jesuit High School in Portland, Oregon. But for the past eight years, I was chapter director here in Oregon's chapter of EDTA. I've been president of the Oregon Theater Educators Association, um, and I currently serve on the advisory board for the Educational Theater Foundation. And somehow intersecting with all of those roles, I've had the opportunity to be an adjudicator for several nominating and selection committees for a variety of boards and grants and scholarships. Thanks, Jeff. And I also want to introduce Ginny, who's our main presenter today, who works a lot on these programs. Ginny? <laughs> Hello, my name is Jenny Butch and I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at EDTA and one of my roles in that position is Awards Administrator. So I do everything from recruit the judges to order the award pieces and everything in between. So our format is that Jenny is going to present for about 20 minutes and uh, Jeff's going to answer different questions along the way and then we'll have time at the end for your questions. So if you hover at the bottom of the screen you'll see the Q&A and you can type in questions at any time as soon as you think about them, and then we'll answer them at the end. So now I'm going to turn it over to Ginny to take it away. Okay. Okay. So first, uh, I wanted to talk about our three main categories of opportunities, and those are awards, grants, and scholarships. There are opportunities to recognize not only theater teachers and their programs, but also students, supportive administrators, and even those exceptional volunteers who help backstage. Note that opportunities we will be talking about today are national awards, grants, and scholarships that are decided by application through the home office. Um, additional opportunities are offered through most chapters and by audition or performance at the International Thespian Festival. So be sure to explore your chapter website or get in touch with your chapter director. Um, for example, Jeff, uh, does Oregon offer any additional state-specific awards? And can no, you tell we us do. about that? Yeah, definitely. And, and uh, recently we merged our uh, Oregon chapter of EDTA with the Oregon Theater Educators Association, and that's resulted in uh, even more opportunities for us to recognize and, and award individuals. But we have um, awards that recognize teachers, students, administrators, community volunteers, and organizations for their contributions to the, the theater education field in general, as well as um, scholarships to support uh, students continuing studies in specific areas of uh, theater performance, theater design and tech, and future theater educators. We also have our own um, Hall of Fame award that we give to uh, theater educators here. That's fantastic, so be sure to check with your chapter. Um, next, we'll talk about how many opportunities are available, and to do that, I'll give you a tiny, I'll tell you a tiny bit about those who were selected during the 2018-2019 school year. We honored four schools and 13 individuals with awards last year. They were selected based on their service and support of theater education and creating exceptional programming and experiences for students. Each recipient was recognized at a national event, either a conference or the International Thespian Festival. As a matter of fact, Jeff was nominated and inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2016. Jeff, can you share a little bit about what that experience was like for you? Well, you know, of course, it was both gratifying and humbling to be nominated and selected by my peers for that honor. But what it really did for me was it focused my attention on the real benefit of the association, which is the association itself. You know, um, the network of educators and artists who are all so committed to, to theater education. And, um, I think so often awards are seen as a way to single someone out or to recognize a singular accomplishment. And that's true to some extent, but uh, especially in theater where collaboration is what it's all about. Um, I think that since collaboration is the center of everything and since part of working in a community is celebrating and recognizing the range of work being done in the community, it really reflects on the field as a whole. So for me, um, 
getting that award reminded me of how fortunate I am to work with the people I work with, um, to be connected to this larger association. And it really inspired me to both contribute and get more from those resources that are at my fingertips. That's really inspiring, Jeff. I think the Hall of Fame is one of the most inspiring evenings we have all year. I, I think agree. that's true. I love hearing the, uh, the, the very specific stories and um, I love sharing uh, that camaraderie and community with so many great people. Okay, we're also very proud of our grant program and we're always looking for more opportunities to help existing programs and build new ones to make sure that students all over the world have access to the amazing benefits that theater education provides. Here's a brief glance at our grant activity last school year. Um, these schools and individuals receive funding to build or enhance theater programs, attend theater events, recover from disasters, and even fund new projects in their classrooms. And here are just a few faces of our incredible grant recipients. Who knows, next year this could be you. Our scholarships are available for high school seniors, as well as college students. Note that over $200,000 was also awarded in chapter scholarships, and an additional $16,000 was awarded at our International Thespian Festival. So again, check with your chapter and explore regional and national events for even more opportunities. Jeff has a special connection to one of our 2009 <laughs> ITF scholarship recipients. Jeff, can you tell us more about her and what she's currently working on? Well, I tell you, my daughter Kelsey attended ITF in 2009 and she came away with $7,000 from two different scholarships, one specifically focused on future theater educators. And um, she just completed her master's degree and she now has a full-time teaching job at the Catherine Thomas School in Rockville, Maryland, teaching theater. And I gotta tell you, that's pretty gratifying, um, both for a theater educator and you know, just for a dad. Congratulations, <laughs> great full circle moment. <laughs> yes. So now that you have a solid idea of what opportunities are available to you, let's get down to business and talk about how to make your application or nomination the best that it can be. The first thing you'll need to understand is who will be reading and scoring your work. Adjudication committees are made up of our top-notch members and leaders. They volunteer their time and talent and consider it a great honor to serve on these committees. Adjudicators take their role very seriously and score each application fairly and with care. Jeff has served in as an adjudicator for a variety of opportunities. Can you tell us what you enjoyed about the experience and or what the most difficult part can be? <laughs> Absolutely. The, you know, the best part is learning more about the terrific work that's being done on so many levels all across the country and beyond. Um, it's inspiring. And uh, I remember reading about a specific school um, that uh, had an initiative that one teacher implemented that she paired her students with, uh, with students with special needs. And um, they worked together to create a combined performing experience. And it was, it was very moving and I couldn't wait to, to follow up and learn more about it. Um, the difficult part is differentiating among several qualified candidates because so many of the applications um, have such a high bar already of qualification. Um, there's so much work being done out there, so much great work being done. So selecting the specifics that make one applicant or candidate stand out in the bunch becomes the challenging task. And in the end, it really is about finding specific, inspiring details and stories that are being told that, that stick and resonate. Those are very good points. So the, um, our adjudication process begins in late November and continues through late March to coordinate with deadlines in December, February, and April. Some reach out to us on their own to offer their expertise and others are recruited by email based on their experience and reputation within the organization. We need lots of adjudicators every year. So if that's something you're interested in doing, please contact me and I would love to tell you more about the opportunities available. Um, just note that you can't serve as an adjudicator if you've applied or nominated someone for the same opportunity. Adjudicators do not know the identity of other adjudicators and do not work together to determine the recipients. Each adjudicator scores each application on their own, then the scores are averaged and the person or school with the highest average score receives the award grant or scholarship. For some opportunities, there may only be one recipient, but for others, um, there may be multiple. 
Before you dive into the application process, take a little time to plan. Set calendar reminders for yourself. Make sure you understand the requirements for each application. Get familiar with the awards platform, log in, and make sure your account is functioning properly. Next, remember that you have several months to submit your application, so get started early and take your time. It's not a bad idea to print out a copy of the questions and keep it next to your desk so you can jot down notes as you think about them. Some opportunities require reference letters or transcripts. Um, make sure you submit those requests early so they can be detailed and thoughtful. Start early so you can submit early. As an awards administrator, I go through, every, I go through early the submissions to check for errors. Um, for example, if you've accidentally marked yourself as a non-member or listed the wrong troop number, I can reach out and give you time to change that before the deadline. Once it's past the deadline, it will be handed over to the adjudicators as is. You know, I can insert um, a personal story here, and that is that uh, I did exactly what you advised at one point when I was doing an application and printed out the questions and worked on them in a, in a word processor and came up with some great responses and great answers. And then I pasted it into the submission box and I wasn't as mindful as I should have been of the word count. I was very close. I mean, I knew there was a word limit, but I didn't know it was as exact as it was. And um, I didn't take that opportunity to reread everything as carefully as I should have after I inserted it and submitted it. And a couple of my answers were beyond the word count. And I, I can't help but think that some of those adjudicators were with me all the way until they got to the end and thought, this guy can't even finish the sentence. So, you know, no way. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yes, pay close attention to the word count. That is a really, really important part of the application. As soon as possible, mark the deadlines in your calendar. Set up additional reminders in your calendar for one month prior, two weeks prior, um, stick post-it notes around your computer or mirror, um, whatever it takes to keep it in the front of your mind. Our award system is managed entirely online and we take deadlines very seriously. Any number of things can go wrong the night before an application is due, so don't procrastinate. Submit early. You'll also see a related favorite quote of my former theater teacher here, who would often calmly point to it, he had it posted on his wall, and anytime we started making excuses, he would calmly point to it and just smile and we knew exactly what the response was going to be. Okay, so you know what's expected and now it's time to start filling out the application for real. Remember that the online system allows you to save and return, even edit submissions up until the deadline. So again, take your time. Think carefully about the contact information that you submit. This is where we will contact you about errors or with questions or to notify you about your status. Prompt responses are expected, so make sure you list a phone number or email address that you check frequently. Are you planning to retire soon? Maybe you will lose access to your work email? Be sure to list a personal one instead. Students should be especially attentive of their email addresses. Um, high school email addresses are often shut down immediately after graduation, which can make it really difficult to get in touch with you. Please don't make us check you, please don't make us ch chase you down so we can give you a check or send your award. Theater people are amazing storytellers. Use that skill to make your application stand out. Tell us a story about you, your life, your dreams. Let us know who you are and what you're passionate about. For grants applications, it's especially important to have a well thought out plan for how you will use the funding. Adjudicators like to see that you have done your research and are responsible with finances. Detail exactly how many students will be impacted by the funding and what exactly that impact means. Give adjudicators a reason to score your application higher than anyone else's. Jeff, can you think of any kind of stories or experiences that stand out to you or share some things about what you're looking for in an applicant? Absolutely. You know, I mentioned the one story about the outreach program. To me, theater is so much about service and um, service to an audience or to your fellow players or, or to a story. And so when uh, service aspects come into play, I'm always uh, definitely end up being focused on that. Um, I remember that uh, I remember reading an application where there was a, a, a teacher who had a program where she had a service project connected to a production and it went very well. So she decided to do it again and it went even better. 
And the award that she was applying for um, was going to allow her to try it again, and maybe even in a bigger way. And so knowing that there's that kind of connection to past success, I guess, really, for me, what it comes down to is um, relevance and specifics, you know, things that are individual. Um, every time I go uh, to see a show with a class, you know, we do a talk back with the cast. And usually, um, whether it's in New York or here in Portland on one of the tours, one of my class members will ask uh, one of the actors, you know, do you have any aud audition tips? And one of the things they always say is, um, you know, at this level, everybody can sing and dance. Everybody can act. They want to see you. They want to see who you are, and they want to know that you're the kind of person that they want to work with, which, you know, speaks to one of EDTA's core values. And um, I, every time I've adjudicated, as I mentioned, I'm struck by the high bar that everyone shares. So what I really look for are specifics that set that applicant apart, and then things that are relevant to the application that they're actually submitting in the award or the recognition that they're nominating um, for. Um, so uh, I, I often get so drawn in and impressed and blown away by uh, what some of uh, my colleagues have done across the country. And then I sit back and think, but you know, that can, those things can probably be true of any good theater teacher or any good teacher of any subject. What is it here that makes this person, this individual, this action, this event, this activity stand out as being something different and relevant to what we're talking about here. And that's where I, I think my attention really gets focused. Perfect. Also remember that you need to keep things professional. I like to say that this only applies to students, but you would be surprised at the number of applications from adults that come in with LOLs or winky faces. Um, find a better way to communicate your tone. Avoid abbreviations or acronyms. Um, adjudicators have a variety of backgrounds and are located all over the country. So don't assume they're familiar with regional programs, organizations, or events. It might seem like an amazing idea to encourage 30 people to send in a nomination for the same person, but it's actually not. Recipients are not determined by the number of nominations submitted, but by the quality of a nomination. Receiving multiple nominations for the same person can be confusing and difficult for the adjudicators to review. It's a much better idea to work together to complete a single stellar nomination full of quotes and stories about a single individual. Similarly, it's very difficult to review a nomination for a pair or team. Please only nominate one individual per application. If you strongly feel that two people or a team must be considered together, contact us first and we'll discuss it and try to find a way to help. If an opportunity requests a letter of recommendation, think carefully about who to ask. You want someone who will add value to your application or nomination. Make sure to give them adequate time to construct a quality recommendation. This should also be professional in nature. The system will ask them to upload this letter, so make sure they know not to use special characters in the file name. This is especially important for guidance counselors. Um, when they're submitting their transcripts, remind them that no dashes, commas, or underscores can be used. And also send them a link to this webinar. Um, these tips can help them provide a personal, detailed, and error-free letter or transcript. Before you click that submit button, let's talk about a few things to make sure your application is in tip-top shape. Spelling and grammar are crucial when you're being scored on what you write. It's usually easier to type your answers into a Word doc to review and then copy and paste them into the submission form. That will also help you track uh, things like word count as well. <laughs> Have someone else review it to catch any errors that you missed. Now you're almost done. Give it one final check and read it out loud to ensure that it flows and makes sense. Make sure you thoroughly answered not only all of the questions, but all parts of the questions. Read it one more time, but put yourself in an adjudicator's shoes. What would you think if you read this application as an adjudicator? Jeff, do you have any advice or final words of wisdom from an adjudicator's perspective? You know, my big piece of advice is just do it. Um, I think people are sometimes hesitant to apply for something or nominate someone because they either see it as something that's self-serving or kind of a frill or extra. I mean, none of us do the things we do for recognition or for awards. Um, there are far more important reasons why we all have chosen to do 
what we contribute so much to and what's so important to us. But um, the awards can help make what we're doing easier and make our efforts and the efforts of others more effective and can make theater and theater education more accessible. And so even singular awards are ultimately about celebrating a community and a collaborative effort. So putting yourself or someone else out there is an important part of participating in the community. Um, I can't tell you how many times uh, uh, I have thought about this, just like I think about auditions. And I, I, I return to that, but like you were saying, it, it really, it, it, it's an audition on paper is what you're doing when you uh, submit an application like this. And um, so often I'll have students who are nervous for auditions or they're hesitant to audition for something because they're, you know, they're afraid and they go into it with this attitude of, you know, do they really want to hear from me? When the reality is, especially those of us who are theater educators, we know we've been in the room and the biggest hope we have is that tons of people are going to walk through that door and they are going to be the right people for the roles that we have, you know, so the adjudicators are rooting for you. They're, they're really wanting to find those details and those nuggets of, of gold that, that are going to get you the selection that you're looking for. So um, go into it with that attitude of you're really helping them do what they're trying to do, which is make these awards and resources and recognition and, and this community celebration possible. You know, we, we need the submissions, we need the applications. That is such a great point. And I just want to echo that by saying that sometimes we have donors as adjudicators too, and these donors are donating the funds for the scholarships or grants. And I've heard from donors, the red applications two years ago, and they're still talking about them and they're so excited. They're giving this money because they care about impacting students and teachers. So to be able to read those stories is so inspiring for them. And it also helps us then attract more donors. So it's a great point that everyone is rooting for you and we really want to see your applications and hear your stories. Exactly, those are all great points. So take a chance, don't be scared. Just check your application and then send it to us. Remember though, don't wait until the last possible minute. If something goes wrong, you might end up missing the deadline. As long as it is before the deadline, you can still go in and make changes. After you've submitted your application, sit back and relax. You did it. Keep a close eye on your email. This is the primary contact that we will use to contact applicants. Don't forget about your spam and junk folder. Uh, we will let you know the results either way and typically contact both parties on the same day. If you or the person you nominated aren't selected this year, don't despair. Can you imagine if you had stopped working in theater after the first rejection? Take some time to regroup and plan a new approach for the next cycle. If you weren't selected, it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It might mean that there was someone who was better qualified or had more experience. Many of our adjudicators, as Jeff mentioned, wanted to see, want to see an individual striving to make a difference in their community, specifically in theater education. Prepare for the next cycle by creating more real-life examples of how you are shaping lives. These are just a few general examples. We'd be happy to provide you with more information about volunteering or involvement. All you have to do is get in touch. Jeff, do you have any examples of volunteer roles or opportunities available at the chapter level in Oregon? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think those volunteer opportunities exist everywhere. But here in Oregon, we um, I think we have a very small board for the scale of events that we uh, are ambitious enough to, to attempt every year. And they're only possible because we um, count on ad hoc volunteers in just about every area. So we have a pretty small board that governs, but we have a huge army of people who make it all possible, whether it's event related, um, we have uh, alumni coordinators, people who, uh, who help with communications, who help uh, with uh, procuring involvement from uh, vendors and the sites where we're having our events. There's all sorts of ways to get involved. And I think that, um, you know, the, it's the many and varied contributions that make the team stronger. And, and uh, because of that, we have several awards that we give that we nominate people for um, at the volunteer level to make sure that those volunteers know that, that their contributions are important. And so those opportunities exist everywhere. That's great. So take a chance, get involved and lend us your talents. 
Um, I also wanted to include a special note about these three awards. Um, they mostly consist of individuals nominating others for an award. And because they have made a difference in your life, we want to make a small difference in theirs. Um, anyone not selected for these awards still, receive, uh, still receives a personal notification that includes who nominated them um, with a quote from their nomination form and an expression of gratitude from our organization for their outstanding service. If possible, we also copy their administrators so they are aware of the high regard in which their employee is held. We love making someone's day with an award grant or scholarship. It's an incredible part of what we do. If you are the recipient of one of our opportunities, we'll send you all the details by email, including event registration discount codes or how to claim a scholarship check. We will need your headshot to use in promotional materials like press releases and on social media. It will certainly be very exciting, but it's very important to give our marketing and communications team proper time to construct an announcement. And once we have announced you, then we'll let you know it's okay to share with anyone that you'd like. We'd love to take your questions live, but just in case we run out of time, or if you think of something later on, um, please feel free to contact me and I would be happy to help. So one question um, for Jeff or Jenny is uh, specifically, um, do you have advice about students applying? Um, any advice on motivating students to apply when they're so busy or helping them with their applications? You know, it, it, our students today are so involved, you know, I think, and I think that's something that all of us share a, across the country. We're experiencing um, our students who go from school to rehearsal to jobs to um, other activities and sports they're involved in. And um, it, it is, I think, sometimes uh, a challenge to, to motivate or to uh, inspire a student that, uh, to, to put themselves out there for an award or for uh, some kind of application. And I think that one way that it has worked for us is just to really help them understand that, um, especially for the seniors, uh, they're, they're already, they, they've got all the material in place. If they've been applying to colleges, they've got the material, they've got the information they need. It really, it's just a matter of kind of repackaging it and encourage them just to take that few clicks and take a look at the way that specifically EDTA and the, and the platform that's used has made it pretty easy to, um, to begin that process. I mean, there's some effort involved, obviously, but I think it's a little easier than some people um, assume it might be. And I think as long as you give it the time it needs and not wait until the last minute. You know, what I've been guilty of as a teacher is noticing scholarship opportunities too late and bringing them to the kids. And then it is a little hectic, but by trying to keep my head up and notice those things um, as they come in. And since so many of them are annual, when I do notice one of those too late, I try to make a note about it for the next year. So students can maybe have a, a little bit of a head start because I think that it's, it's a valid concern for the students, you know, do I really want to add this to my plate? But if they can do it early enough, um, then I think that it's something they, they can definitely see as worthwhile. Thank yeah, you. I think parents can be a big motivator too. Um, if the troop director has a way to get in touch with parents to just let them know that those opportunities are available, um, since they're typically the ones paying for college, um, <laughs> this can be a big motivation to get their students to um, go ahead and submit an application. Absolutely. And I want to add one more plug too, which is we have some new scholarships for college students. And because those are new, not as many students are aware of them. So if you have alumni, and I know that so many theater teachers keep in touch with their alumni and are following them through college and into their career, if you have some alumni that would be a good fit for these uh, new scholarships for college students, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to them. So I, uh, we're coming to the end of our time here. I wanna thank Jeff and Ginny for all this great information. And thank you for spending your time with us. I hope it's motivated you and informed you to put out some applications and Maybe we'll be handing you some plaques and some money in the near future. Um, please uh, know that this will be up on YouTube and um, publicly available so you can share it with your students and your peers and your recommenders uh, who are writing letters for your application. And we'll be back next month as part of the series with new topics. So please keep coming back and learn more about EDTA. Thank you so much. <laughs>